happy woman. And now we uh, just complete our day here in the cross-country opener. And once again, look at the Norwegians four there. It's Russia versus Norway. Well, Mike, the Norwegians have got such an amazing record here. You know, it's hard to think that the Russians are going to be able to deny them when, you know, they've got twice as many in the final. It's, it's quite amazing how the, the form of this nation, when they come to the first World Cup, uh, the history is outstanding. I think uh, Barry Bjorgen painted the picture, you know, that her, the Norwegian girls' skis were excellent. And, and that, you can't overemphasize how important that is if you, if you don't have top-class skis or waxing. It's, it's almost impossible to take these victories here. She had great skis, she knew it and, it, and it helped her to that victory today. 67 World Cup victories. How good is that? I mean, it's, it's legend. And to the most uh, medaled uh, female Norwegian at the Olympics. Yeah, I just, you know, I, it, it is just quite amazing what a, an athlete Marit Bjergen is. But let's uh, put that to one side and now focus on this uh, men's final. Eric Bransdahl, who is a great tactician, used to golf, we know, likes to go out there. Nortuk, well, he, he brutalized his way into the final by virtue of a lucky loser's place because the second semi-final was so outrageously slow. But I still don't see him on the podium here. But, you know, maybe I'm an idiot to oppose Peter Nortuk. Well, when it comes to the final, he, he can make magic. He can bring something special out of his own performance. I love this, this, the look of this guy, Fosley. And the other thing also is, you know, uh, the controversy over Peter Nortug's appalling behavior with his driving accidents and everything else. Maybe that's uh, a lightened something inside him now that he feels that he's actually got to prove, having been a really bad boy, that he's got to come back and be a really good boy on the snow at his day job. I mean, he's got a lot of pressure in his life, and he did uh, with a disappointing season last year, and, and, and people do daft things occasionally, and uh, it happens. It happens. It's behind him now, and I think he will be a stronger person for it. The two Russians. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Russian bear, isn't he? Look at the size of him. That is a powerhouse man. He can fight. He's, he is like a fighting bear as well. In stature, he's uh, quite a bit shorter than the rest on the lineup. But look at all those Norwegians over there. They've all got the pole positions over the Russians for the right-hander and the opening descent. They have. Bransdahl's got to be favourite, but I think this could be the first victory in Fosley's career at World Cup. Is there something wrong with the gun again? <laughs> Well, the adrenaline on that start line, it, it is, it is the final. This will be more tactical, David, without a doubt. They're, they're not racing against the clock now. They're racing for a positions one, two, or three. So the strategy will be different. Could play into the hands of, uh, well, the out-and-out -out dynamic sprinter. Uh, well, that's, that's Nortuk for me. Well, Fosley, your favourite, has already produced a personal best because, uh, because uh, seventh for his previous World Cup performance. Uh, the best one he's ever produced, that was in Drammen last season. So he's already improved on that, the 21-year-old. And now it's all a question, as you say, of what is probably the most tactical race of the day. But Bransdahl, Eric, who won it last year at the front, he is in such good form right now. Uh, he will be a hard man to beat. Ustagov, though, tough. This is where he likes to be. Remember, this is what Ersberg tried to do as well, but couldn't do it at the end of the day. Missed out on the podium. Ustikov, he puts, he seems to put so much extra energy out. There's, he always, he's gone wide on that corner every single time. At the back there, Krug of uh, Norway. Nortug, uh, the hat is off, he means business. But he's in fourth place. And Bransdahl, he's got to be supremely confident. Bransdahl positive, good skis there. You could see from Ustikov, really good glide, brought him up to share 
second place Nortuk without the hat on the far side base of the hill now trying to move up there actually looking better than in the quarterfinals and the semi-finals now suddenly the technique is there as well as the power and strength incredible he is the ultimate hunter is Nortuk and he's wanting to put all the wrongs right by getting a victory here that would help the press Fosley's fading but it's not over yet yeah, this is, oh, and Norto gets a gift of <laughs> a mistake there by his teammate, lets him in. Unfortunately, uh, his skis are gripping, over-gripping, as we saw with Ustberg. So, Bramstahl and uh, Norto come round that top turn there. And Norto, uh, how much energy has he used up here? Toe-to-toe -to -toe as they come down here. And the man who's off on the head waiter starts to really push ahead. Norto's used up everything. He's got nothing else to give. And it's the man who was runner-up in the Sprints World Cup last year who takes the opening victory here at uh, Ruka. Tactically, very astute. Made a mistake just at the top of the hill. Didn't panic regained his uh, composure and sprinted past Norto, who didn't have anything else to give. Nothing, and, and I think you're right. You alluded to the fact that he was a spent force the last time. He got through as a lucky loser, but that magic that he has in his mind, he brought it to the performance today and took silver medal. Well, he, uh, Norto, certainly his best performance, best technique, best... The whole thing came together in that last race. It was all a bit rough around the edges in the early stages, so I have to eat my words, because I didn't think he was going to make the podium. He has. Fosley, personal best, on the podium there. And the Norwegians, one, two, three, four. Patukov, five. Ustigov, six at the end. Like Ersberg, did a lot of the early work leading and paid for it when it mattered most. Suffered uh, later, absolutely. But Eric Bransdell, there, there was unlikely anyone was going to catch him today. He just looked so, so strong, so good. And uh, he still had that extra punch, which Norto used to, used to always have that extra... 50 meters attack where he could match and beat anybody not today so eric bransdow whose home is oslo 28 years of age he's one of the most experienced men out there today and was ninth in the olympic freestyle sprint but uh, this is a man who uh, actually hasn't won since milan 2012 so that's a, a great piece of news for him to come through and start his sprinting season the first of nine races in the sprint division with a victory and of course <laughs> they've got uh, they've got a clean sweep on the podium the norwegians in fact they've got the first four put that together with marit bjergen and uh, michael kasperson faller it's been a norwegian sprint day here in ruka Well, it'll be nice to get a word with uh, Franz Dallin here. What he made of today's track. Interesting about the uh, course there that uh, Marit Bjergen was alluding to, that the top of the hill was actually... Uh, so that must have been crafted with some work that actually uh, you can't really tell from when it's covered with snow. An extra two metres of, of height. Yeah, quite interesting. And, and the impact that that, that uh, had on, on uh, Bjergen. And, and uh, it is, they know this track so well. That little bit of extra, two more meters, has a quite a big influence on the outcome. The hill was big enough, I thought, and steep enough. So, Bransdale, well, um, did I say that he, um, well, of course, it's, it's sort of, uh, I said that he hadn't won since Milan. Of course, he did win here last year, uh, but it was part of that, uh, tour. that, that part of the tour thing. So well, you only get 50% of the points. So actually, he's defended his uh, sprint title here in Ruka. It's very strange when they join them all together and they sort of say, no, that isn't a victory. It's, it, it, it's strange for me. I would like to see that change in the tours if you win a World Cup race. I think every race is a race and therefore you should be yeah. uh, accredited the win in its own right if you win it well and, and Bransdahl again he's it all seems so effortless for him compared to the body language of North who was a, a, a total spend force across the line Bransdahl is just so fired up for this victory well I hope you've enjoyed that uh, great start to the cross-country season more to come of that tomorrow